Oh, Jesus. Hey, welcome back. So, today, um, we're going to be talking about steamboats, right? Or hot pots, okay? It's a delicious dish. It's actually one of my favorite ways to eat food. Um, it is a good uh, it's a social meal, right? It's healthy. One of the healthier meals you can have right I know you're gonna enjoy this I'm gonna give you some information about it you got to try this right and I'm going to try to be as informative as I can because a lot of people they want to do a hot pot but they don't know how right or they don't have the confidence to do it but we're gonna take care of that today you know see this mama Shaw got me this for Father's Day and she gets on me uh, because I don't put in the videos. Okay, the reason I don't put in the videos, um, just like it says, chef, right? People call me chef. I don't call myself a chef, right? I'm just a guy that likes to cook and I have a little bit of knowledge. Uh, but it's still cool she got me this. But when I wear it, you can't see what T-shirt I got on. I know a lot of people like the different T-shirts that I wear. Uh, but anyway, anyway, that's that's another story. But we're going to get into this. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Hey, this is Shaw Shaw. That's the best elevated music I ever heard. Now, even though you can have hot pot, or some people call it steam pot, um, any time during the year, absolutely any time, uh, it's best to have it as the temperature starts dropping. Now, you might say, why? Because you're going to get that, all that nutrition, it's going to boost your immune system, right? So it's good during cold season have that right now hot pot what they say is it came from or it originated in China okay let's get this, this, this straight but they say it originated um, from the Mongolians okay the Mongolian um, uh, army the, the, the writers if you will um, not so much the ones that you know that hunt with the eagles that's something different but if you should look into that, hunting the eagles. Anyway, anyway. Um, but what would happen is when they were traveling across the lands, you know, they didn't really have any uh, a proper way to cook their food. So what they did is they took the helmets off, the metal helmets. They would put liquid in it, broth, right, and then they cooked their meats and their vegetables in their helmet. A hot pot, depending on where you eat it, it, in a lot of places, considered nothing more than a stew. Okay? Cambodians do it. Vietnamese people do it. Right? Thai. Right? Even the Japanese are doing it. Koreans do it. Right? But, like I said, it's mainly a Chinese deal. And the way I do mine is a mix, a hybrid, if you will, between Chinese and Japanese, right? When you get into Japanese, it's called shabu shabu, which loosely translated means swish swish, right? So what, that, what happens when you're cooking the meat and you're, you know, dragging it through the hot broth and the liquid's hitting the side of the pot, as it swishes, you're swishing it through. Right? So, shabu shabu. So there's some nice little uh, fun facts for you. Next thing I'm going to do, we're going to cover the meat. Um, so let me get to that. Now when you're dealing with hot pot meat, what you want to remember, it needs to be thinly sliced. Okay? Whether it be the beef, you know, the lamb, right, the pork, it needs to be thinly sliced. Yes, you can use chicken. Um, I've done it 
sometimes, you know, don't really recommend it, but hey, it works, right? Just cut it really, really thin, okay? Now, you could cut your meat, your beef, your lamb, your pork, you can cut it thin yourself. There is a slicer specifically used for that. Yes, I have one. I don't think I'm going to show it in this video. Um, that thing is hella sharp, All right? So for me to use it, um, I have a uh, steel chainmail glove to make sure I don't cut my digits off. But anyway, I get my meat um, from either my Seoul Korean market, or my Asian market. Um, that's where you're going to get it. And it comes in packages. It's already thinly sliced like this, right? Most times you'll find it like in boxes like this, packaging like this. And depending on where you go, there are going to be dozens of choices. But normally each store, they would keep around, you know, anywhere from five to seven different uh, meat choices for you. Uh, but they're all good. The lamb, Australian lamb, you know, different cuts of beef, you can brisket, um, ribeye, uh, sukiyaki, you know, just a whole bunch of different ones. Now, here in the House of Straw, we like the sliced ribeye, um, we like the sukiyaki, um, brisket's okay, right? And then you got the pork, I like the Black Forest uh, ham that's thinly sliced, uh, pork shoulder that's thinly sliced is good, right? Or just regular, just... Um, thinly sliced pork, you know, almost like bacon, not not the belly, but it's kind of like bacon, there's, there's quite a bit of meat in it, um, and those are going to cook really fast, we're going to cover that here a little later, uh, but my main point is, if you're going to do this, uh, go to your Asian markets, right, ask them where the shabu shabu in the meat is, or the thinly sliced meat for hot pot, they'll point you straight to it, and you'll see what I'm talking about, the choices are limitless. Right, depending on where you go. Yes, it is kind of weird, but anyway, last time I did a hot pot, I even had wagyu. That was expensive, but it was okay. The taste was it was okay. So, the next thing we're going to talk about, we're going to cover a little bit about uh, the vegetables, okay? And again, this goes to your taste, your liking, right? What works for you. But when you're doing a hot pot, this also gives you an opportunity to try vegetables um, and meats that you may not have had before. Because some of them are made specifically for hot pot, like these sliced meats, right? But you can stir fry them and do anything else with them. But, so be adventurous and try it out. Now, I'm gonna cover the vegetables. Now, the vegetables we're gonna be using, uh, we have, um, we're gonna be using some red potatoes, okay? Uh, we're going to be using some baby bok choy, right? Cilantro, green onions or scallions, if you want to call it that. We're going to be using some uh, Napa cabbage and some spinach. Now, you can add other things on there. Uh, you can add sesame leaves if you like. That works. Now, I do have some um, red leaf lettuce in there, which I may or may not use. I'm still debating it, but it, you know, it's usable. You can put your meats in it, the veggies, and wrap it up with one bite there for you. There's some tong ho I want to use, um, which is a Asian uh, green. Um, they didn't have it when I went to look for it, so I'm not getting it this time. Uh, and I'm also going to be using some enoki mushrooms, okay? Now I'm going to show you how I prepare some of these so you can see just, you know, how easy it is. All right, so for the green onions, you know, they've been washed. I cut the root end off, and I cut the, the top inch and a half off. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it in half, right? Because half of it, I want to cut into little rings, right? that we can use for garnish or that we can use for our sauces later on. Now I have a little Ziploc here with a small sandwich bag that has paper towels in it and I'm going to put this these cut pieces in here so the paper towel can absorb 
the excess liquid, the excess water, okay? Because when you're storing this in the fridge, you don't want that extra water in there. Not your friend. Okay? Now as for these guys, more of the white end, all we're gonna do, just chop it in half one good time, and we're gonna put that into another sandwich bag with paper towel in it to absorb that moisture, right? And this is gonna go into the soup. The next thing we're gonna work on is our milky mushrooms. Now, you see, it still has the root end on it. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go up about two inches and cut it and remove that. We don't want that. You know, some people, they will just dump it in as is. Don't do that. Do not do that. And then you can take this enoki mushroom and I'm putting it again in a little sandwich bag with a paper towel in it to wick up in the excess liquid. Because with this being a mushroom, you don't want all that water, that extra water. You don't want it. And this is going to go back in the fridge. See what we got next. Now for our bok choy, baby bok choy, what we want to do, because these are grown in the ground, so we want to cut the little tip off, the root. Just cut that off. And then you can start to separate them, you see? So you can separate them. I'm putting, this, putting them in this water here. And we're going to do this with all of them. I got quite a bit here. I'm not going to show you me doing all these, but it's pretty, pretty simple. You know, some people, they will take the entire bok choy or baby bok choy and just throw it in the hot pot. I really wouldn't recommend that because you can't really enjoy it for what it is. That's why I use the baby bok choy. You know, it's, it's smaller more manageable and for me I like the taste you know personally so I'm gonna do the rest of these and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next all right so I'm gonna wash now I've been washing this for a couple minutes now you know you definitely want to make sure you wash these vegetables because they've been in the dirt you know now what I'm gonna do put these in my salad spinner Right, to knock the additional water off of it before I put it in the bag. Now you might have to, you know, spin it a couple of times and then drain the water. See, look at this. See how cloudy that water is now? Can you see that? Look at the dirt and stuff at the bottom. Yeah, you don't want to eat that. Put the top of this bad boy. Go ahead and spin it a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to put these into a Ziploc bag with some paper towels in it to catch any additional liquid that we may have missed. Okay. Now this is going to go in the fridge. And I think we're going to do the spinach next. And I already have the first pack of spinach in here in the water. So what I normally do, you have your bundle of spinach. You know, if you get it from the Asian market, it's going to be like this. So what I do is right before the band, where you get all the stems, I cut it. Okay? And all these stems, I throw out. Because I don't want them. Don't eat them. And then... I release the band 
and separate the spinach into my bowl of water. And when I can kind of look at it, see? See what I'm working with? In it goes. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna wash these guys, give them a little spin, and we're gonna bag these up. All right, let's get these in here now. Gonna have to do these in a couple batches. Now, am I gonna eat all this in one hot pot? Nope, not a chance. But I'm cleaning them all now, so they'll be ready when I need them. Okay, put the other ones in, last ones. And these are gonna go in the fridge until it's time to plate up. Well, until it's time to lay everything out, anyway. And now we have, you know, this Napa cabbage, this beastly dude. Um, it's relatively easy to clean if you know what you're doing. First thing you want to do is pull off the outermost leaves. Let's get these off. You know, they're the, the damaged leaves that's been out in the elements, right? And we're going to get rid of these. Now, the way I do it at this point, you look at the root, okay? You look at the root, and I'm going to cut into the root, right? About an inch and a half to two inches, and then I'm going to pull it apart, okay? So I'm not cutting all the way through it. I'm going to just pull it apart, use some elbow grease. Pull it apart, and what that's going to allow you to do is get some nice, healthy leaves like this. So when you pull it off, see, good leaves. And you're just going to go through, go all around, and just pull off, pull your leaves off. Get the tender ones in the middle if you want to. And just stack them up. See? Now, if you do it this way, it makes it a lot easier to cut, too. And we're going to be doing that here in a minute. Because clearly you don't want, you know, these big hunking pieces of an apple cabbage. Maybe you do. I don't. Okay. Just grab my cutting board. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I have my water here. Now as I take some of these a stack of these. I'm going to cut them in half and then at this point I can decide do I want the hard piece on the bottom or do I want the nice pieces on top. Nine times out of ten I go for the nice pieces on top. I mean I'm not making kimchi or anything like that so the bottom half you can use it in the hot pot. It just takes a little longer to cook, but you could definitely use it. And see, even still, you still get some of it. Now, you can cut it again, right? Like, for example, like this big piece here, I could completely cut it again. I, probably, I am, as a matter of fact. Let me stack some of these bigger pieces up and give them another cut before I wash them. Now we go through and we peel these, the other half off. So once I get this done, I'll be back and I'll show you what's next. Right now, cilantro 
We're just going to give it like a nice little rough chop and then we're going to wash it. Okay, in the bowl it goes. In the bowl. Now we're going to wash this and drain it. All right, so our cilantro, wash it. It's going into the Ziploc with a paper towel in it to absorb the moisture. And then this is going to go into the refrigerator with the rest of the vegetables. All right. Now, the last thing we have to do now, as far as the vegetables really, is to wash the potatoes. I mean, you know how to do that. I'm pretty sure you do, so I'm not gonna show you that, but I'm gonna do that right now. All right, now we're gonna take a minute or, or two and we're going to talk about your broth, which is the main base of your hot pot. Okay, very important. Now, if times are tough and you got to make do, just put some water in there, the onion, a little garlic, and leave it at that. Okay, but if you have a little bit of disposable income, a little bit of extra money laying around, you can put some chicken broth in it. There you go. That could be your broth, beef broth, right? Hey, vegetable stock, seafood stock, whatever you got to make your broth, okay? And it's not real difficult, it's just whatever your taste buds like. Now, in this case, Mama Shaw, she's not big on uh, the fancier broth, as it were. She likes just basic uh, chicken and beef. So yes, I have a split pot for her. One side will have chicken broth in it. The other side will have beef broth. And the way I do that, I use uh, bouillon cubes, right? So the bouillon cubes, chicken, beef. Now, because of the way she likes it, I put about four to six uh, little cubes in each side of the pot, okay? Now myself, I use a triple pot, okay? The reason I use a triple pot, because as I'm eating, sometimes I just want a plain, flavorful broth. Sometimes, depending on what I'm eating at the time, I want to kick it up a notch, put a little bit of spice, and but then sometimes I just want a nice, neutral, uh, vegetarian, as it were, broth. So, I use little sheep products. Now, little sheep, it's good to go. I like it, okay? I've been using it for years. It's my go-to for hot pot base. Here I have what? The plain here. You got the mushroom here. And then I have the hot and spicy here. Now, I will also, I couldn't find it this time, but I will also keep my eyes out for the uh, miso. Because I do love the flavor of miso. And I have a miso broth that I put together from a hot pot, okay? So that's a little quick little deal about your broth, okay? You have to have your broth. Also, behind me, you might see a little pot. It's not little, actually. It's a nice size pot, but um, it has water in it, and I'm bringing it to a boil. Because as you're a hot pot, as you eat the hot pot, your water levels, your broth levels are going to go down, Add some more hot water to it, get your levels back up, okay? You don't want to add cold water to it, right? Now, let's talk about some seafood. So for the seafood, now, the generic, or I won't say generic, I'll say the common seafood that you put in the hot pot is shrimp, okay? There's a little conversation about whether you should peel it or not. You know the peanut gallery, you know I have to peel it for them. So they put it in there uh, and cook it. Now, I'm gonna have the times on how you cook your meat, prepare your meats in the hot pot. During this video, you'll see it, it'll pop up, the cooking times and so forth, so you can see how it's going. Because I've seen some people, uh, they put the meats in the, the broth and they say, yeah, this is gonna cook. 
uh, this meat, this thinly sliced meat, is going to cook for 10 minutes. No, you're wrong. No, that's way too much. Okay. So now, anyway, the seafood. Back to that. I got on a little tangent. But anyway, so shrimp is a common one. You can use fish. You know, I'm going to insert some clips, and you'll see I've used crab. I've used clams, right? You can also use squid, mussels, right? Whatever you like can go into the hot pot, right? It's going to cook fast, and you're going to enjoy it. So just keep that in mind. The limits of this, it all depends on your imagination, your creativity, okay? And also the guests that you have there. Now, we're starting to wind down, as it were, as far as the ingredients. Um, now that you've had your meat, you've had your vegetables, you've had your seafood, now you want something that's going to ground you, okay? That's where your noodles are going to come in, okay? Now, if it's just you, you only need one type of noodle. And you can even just grab some noodles, you know, from Top Ramen, and you'd be good to go. Or some sobiaki noodles, or your sobi noodles. You can do some udon noodles, or you can do some vermicelli noodles. Fresh noodles will work. Hey, if you're in a crunch, throw some spaghetti in there. It'll work. You'll be okay. Um, but if you have fresh noodles, it's going to cook quick. If they're dry noodles, just look at the directions on the package to see how you cook them, right, and adapt it to your hot pot. Um, but you end your hot pot with a nice noodle soup, okay? And as you've been cooking it, cooking your meats, your veggies, your seafood, that broth is getting so flavorful that your noodles are going to be kicked up a notch, okay? Now, now that I say that, it reminds me, and I want to go back, because I kind of missed it with the vegetables and the broth. When you're dealing with the hot broth, the spicy stuff, okay, when you put your meats in there, it's going to be a little bit spicy, um, which is fine because that's what you want. You dipped it in the spicy, you want spicy. Now, if you put the vegetables in that spiciness, just like the noodles, it's going to absorb all the oils from the peppers and the, and the heat that's in that spiciness. So, well, you might taste a piece of meat and it might seem a little bit bland to you, maybe a little kick to it. You bite that vegetable that's been in there, it might feel like your face fell off because you're gonna get all of it, all of the heat, which is good. I mean, it wakes you up, makes you remember you're alive. And that's what you want, okay? Now, I've told you all that, now we're going to get into the equipment that you need. So let me show you what I'm working with. Now with your hot pot, when you're dealing with sides, I mean, you can have any kind of size you want. Like, we're going to be having those potatoes, right? You can have corn, that's fine, whatever you want, right? We're going to have shrimp as a side. We're also going to have fish cakes. Now, the fish cakes are these what I got here. And we're going to be just slicing them up into thin slices. And we're going to have smoked sausage to have it sliced up thinly. And we're going to have uh, meatballs. Mama Shaw, she wants Italian meatballs, so she's going to have that. We're gonna have beef meatballs. We have pork meatballs. If you want, you could throw some dumplings in there. You know, the Chinese dumplings, those will work. Whatever you want. Hey, crab, again, go back to the seafood. Crab will work. Just whatever makes you happy for your meal, you can enjoy that. So let's start getting it ready. In addition to those sides, I'm also going to be having some tofu. Now, I recommend you use firm tofu for this because anything less than firm, I use extra firm myself. 
anything less than that, it will crumble too easily in your broth. So go for firm, preferably extra firm tofu, and you'll be okay. Now I know there's gonna be a question as to whether or not you can put eggs in this. And the answer, for the short answer, the easy answer, is yes, absolutely. Take your egg, your raw egg, put it right in the, in the uh, broth, and boil it like you normally boil an egg. Or, you can crack your egg into your sauce. Mix it in, enjoy it that way. Or, you can take a ladle or a big spoon, put it in your broth, crack the egg into the spoon, and poach your egg. And then enjoy it that way with the flavors of the broth. So yes, you can absolutely add an egg to it. Okay, now, let's talk a little bit about pops, okay? Hot pot pops. If it's just you, right, maybe one other person, hey, maybe up to three, actually. You can just use a simple pot, one broth, and you'll be good to go. And so, that's what you need, okay? And it has to be compatible with an induction cooker, right? Induction um, tabletop cooker. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Now, if you like the peanut gallery where they want two different broths, right? When Mama Shaw, she wants a chicken one and she wants her beef, you got to go for the split pot. Now, the split pot, what's good about the split pot, you have two different sides, you have two different broths, so if you have someone, uh, let's say for example, one person is a, is a vegetarian, and one person a meat eater, that pot will work. Vegetarian can have their side, meat eater can have their side, and you'll be good to go. Now then, if you like me, I always do the triple stuff, so I have my triple pot. So I can have three different broths going at one time. Because depending on what I'm eating, you never know what I'm gonna want, what flavor profile I need, so that I don't get hit with that flavor fatigue. Now we all have fa flavor fatigue, and what that is, is when you're eating something that you really like, you wanna keep eating it, but you just, you're tired of eating it because the, the taste is the same. It, <laughs> You want to keep going, but you just can't because you're trying to eat. Flavor fatigue. So, when you have more than one flavor, it breaks up that flavor fatigue, and you're good to go. So, these are the pots that I use. Now, if I have guests over to the house, I generally use the split pot and the triple pot. Why? Because if you have more than four or five people, you don't know what they're gonna be dipping in, you don't know what they're gonna be eating, um, so you wanna give them options, okay? I'm all about options. Um, I'll put some clips in if I haven't already done it, so you can see how I do my hot pots, you know, the peanut gallery, Mama Charlie, you know, they say I go too far, I'm doing too much with it, but I hate to have someone over and I cook for them and they're not satisfied. So I'm gonna give them options, okay? Now, the other thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need a bowl, clearly, uh, chopsticks, or you're gonna need some chorks. I'll explain that in a minute. You're gonna need um, a ladle and then something to strain when you go fishing for your shrimp or your meat that fell in there and you lost it. And it will happen. You will lose food in the hot pot. So keep that in mind. Now, I'm gonna show you real quick what a torque is, um, and then we'll keep it moving. So you have your chopsticks. This is a torque, okay? Can you see that? This is a torque. A fork on one end, chopsticks on the other end, and they're meld it together. So, if you're not good with chopsticks, this will be a good piece of equipment for you, right? Check the description out, I'll show you where you can get them, but this will work. 
and it's also good for training on how to use chopsticks okay so if you can't pick them up with chopsticks turn it over stab it right and lift it up now you're also going to need some tongs if you just want to hurry and get the stuff out quick grab you some tongs and you'll be able to get it out of there now i hope this is helping you out but we're going to keep it moving next so now most of the hot pots that you get um they are compatible with induction cookers a little bit. Um, for example i have here the new wave induction cooker it doesn't matter what the brand name is they have this guy another induction cooker right you need those because you don't want to have your hot pot on the stove and you have to keep running back and forth to heat it up and then bring it back to so no have it on your table let it keep percolating so you don't have to stop eating to go warm it back up worst thing you have to do is get up and go get some more hot water out of the pot that you already have from boiling just to refill your hot pot all right now before we get started i'm going to implement a clip uh again another the, show it to you again this is from a previous uh, hot pot that i did with some uh, family and friends right some extended peanut gallery if you were so you'll see just to remind you that i take the hot pot you know relatively seriously and you'll see why mama sean and peanut gallery um says i can get a bit overboard uh, when i do this i just want people to have the best options i probably already showed you this earlier but if i didn't before we eat i'm going to show you how we throw down when it's just more than me and mama Trump. hope you enjoy this and then we're going to get to the food Ooh. <laughs> See what happened to the gather for months? What's that? See what happened to the gather for months? Tell me about it. This is crazy. Uh huh. <laughs> Where it said you will lose the. All right, this is Mama Shaw's setup. Yeah. She's got her split pot in this here. Chicken and beef. All right. She has her meatballs, her shrimp, sausage. She got her noodles there. Got her veggies, potatoes, milky mushrooms, spinach, green onions, Napa cabbage. Yeah, baby bok choy. Let me go back over here. Got the sukiyaki right there. You know, beef. We got the ribeye right here. Look at that. Got some more beef slices there. We got the sliced pork right there. Actually, this is not beef. This is actually lamb. Sorry about that. The Australian lamb. And then here's the pork. So I know she's about to get down and get dirty. So here we are. Here's my layout. Right. Got the three broths there. Yep, got my meat. I'm dipping sauce, my goma sauce. Let's get into it. All right, now, uh, when we're dealing with sauces, you know, there are many combinations that you can come up with. Now, what I've done for you, or actually for any of my guests that I have over here to do a hot pot, I provide a list of 
a common combination. You can take that list, now put it on the screen so you can see, um, and go to the sauce bar that I set up. You can create your own sauces, or you can look at the list and build an existing sauce that I've come up with that I know is going to match real well uh, with your meal. So here's a list. Look it over and enjoy. Okay, now when it comes to dipping sauces, me, I, I keep it almost basic. I said almost basic. Um, but when I have guests over, um, I like to make sure there are more than enough options available. Right? Uh, I'm going to insert a clip here or here or maybe even right here in the middle. And so you'll see, if you haven't seen before, how I lay out my sauce bar uh, if I have a guest. Goma sauce, right? Goma sauce is a sesame based sauce, or I might use some ponzu sauce, but that's really all I need personally, right? Um, but I will add, you know, garlic and maybe some cilantro, just whatever I feel like at the moment. That's why it's nice to have a well stocked sauce bar. Now, in this particular video, I'm not going to lay all my sauces out and things like that for you. Um, it just, it, there's just too many, and it's just me eating by myself. So, um, just know that the options are limitless. And now also, now I have to rub this in you know, for Mama Shaw because she's a big ketchup fan. Ketchup is not an option, okay? Leave the ketchup, leave the mustard, get it out of there. It's not part of the hot pot. There are so many other sauces that you can use. Try something new. You never know what you might like, okay? And then furthermore, when you see people online doing hot pots, they have the hot pot, you see the water boiling there, but in the middle, there's a metal-like grill, okay? That's not hot pot. That's not even a part of the hot pot, okay? What that is, that's for grilling or barbecue, specifically Korean barbecue, okay? So if you want to do grilling in the hot pot, you can, but me, if I'm going to grill, I'm going to grill separately. If I'm going to do a hot pot or steamboat, I'm going to do that equally separately. Right? I'm not going to combine the two unless the peanut gallery makes me, and hopefully they won't. I want to keep them separate. So if I'm doing a hot pot, I want you to know I'm doing a hot pot. I'm not grilling anything. I'm not frying anything. So let's get my area set up so we can get our grub on. Again, when I have guests come over for a hot pot, you already know I have, you know, a list of the sauces, but I also have a, a printout, a list I made for cooking times for the different items, okay? The cool thing about hot pot is you cook your own food. So if it's overdone, it's your fault. If it's underdone, it's your fault. So to make it easy, I just create a list, pass it out, Everybody gets it. You got your sauce combinations. You have your cooking times. So you can enjoy yourself. And I'll put this right here so you can see it. I might put it over. You never know where I'm going to put it, but you'll get it. And I hope you enjoy it. All right, so here we go.
Got my spicy broth here. Mushroom broth over here. And we got our plain here. Yes. So now the order you want to eat your hot pot, you always start off with your meats first, okay? Now I'm going to try this pork here in the plain. Now this is a different pork than I normally get. Uh, they didn't have the black forest, but I'm going to try this out. See what it's working with. I'm going to give this a good 15 seconds. Maybe even more because it's pork. Marshall didn't like it, so I'm going to give it more time than I normally would. And then I'm going to dip it in my goma sauce. See what we got. That's a basic pork. Now, in the mushroom, I'm going to put my potato in there because it's going to take at least 15 minutes to percolate. So, we're going to let that go. Now, let's get back. So it meets. Now, if you have corn, it's at this time you want to put your corn in as well. Okay? Get some of this lamb. The lamb in the plain. This lamb is only going to take about 10 seconds. Pretty much once it changes color, it's good to go because it's cut so thin. There we go. This is good. A little piece. There we go. Now, I've seen people put their meats in the hot pot. Mm. For five to ten minutes. That's too long. When it's cut thin like this, it's too long. Now the shrimp, I'm going to put the shrimp into the mushroom broth, right? I'm going to throw the tofu in there too. I may have to go fishing for those, but we'll see. Try some of this ribeye. Actually, I'm putting the ribeye in this spice in here. Yep. Why are you running, ribeye? Come on. Yeah. You're done. There we go. Mmm. Hot. So hot. But delicious. Try some of this beef sukiyaki. And for this guy, this is like a little broken up piece. So I'm going to put it in my strainer in the broth. Cook it in the strainer in the broth so it don't run away. Because that piece was kind of like shredded a little bit. There we go. Now put this in my goma sauce. Yep. 
take some of the sausage, put it in the plane. Yeah, I put one of the spices too. Let it soak up some of that spiciness. Mmm. Take some of these beef. Take one beef, put it in the plain and the mushroom. Take one pork meatball, put it in the plain and the mushroom. Then my fish cakes. Put those in the plain. Now I'm gonna have to fish those shrimp out here pretty soon before they get overcooked. And I'll put a time thing up so you can see how long you should be cooking your meats. I'm not sure if I have anything on there for the smoked sausage. But the smoked sausage, give that about a good three minutes, two to three minutes. Just, you know, you just warm it through. It's already cooked. Mmm. Hot. Where the shrimp go? Oh. Jumped in the plane. I'll take it. We get the other ones. Oh, saw you. Oh, come here. One more. Oh, oh saw you. I'm going to use my, my strainer and get it. There it goes. Easy peasy. Goma sauce. Super hot, temperature wise. So you want to put your, you know, cook your meats first, eat your meats first. That's going to help flavor the broth. Mm. So you do your meats first, then your vegetables, right? But even prior to the meat, you want to put things in that take a long time to cook. You know, your tubers, you know, like your potatoes, right? Maybe even some thick cut carrots, your corn, put the corn in there. Meatballs, if you have them, give them a head start. Mm. Some of these spicy sausages out here. Now, when you when you have a hot pot, like I said before. You're going to lose some foods that you put in your hot pot, unavoidable. You're going to lose them or you're going to forget you put them in the broth 
and then all of a sudden they'll show up. Woo! That's temperature hot right there. Stuff cooks so fast. In the hot pot, you wouldn't believe it. So you want to take them out and let them rest. Let them cool down a bit before you do like I did and just throw them in your mouth. Grab this tofu. tofu on the side here. Try to cool down a bit. Add some of this fish cake here. Hopefully it's cooled down enough to go the sauce. So now, as far as the fish cake, if you're a fan of imitation crab meat, you'll like this, without a doubt. More than slam. And it's cut this thin, cooks really fast. Look at that, already done. I'm gonna see it right there to cool down. Do I have some more sausage? Mm -hmm. Now, when you're enjoying a fellowship with friends with hot pot, you don't have to worry about germs. When you get your food, swish your chopsticks or tongs in the broth, five seconds or so will kill all the germs. You ain't got to worry about that. Mushroom broth. Got this guy here in the lamb. Outstanding. You know, so I wanted to put this together. I know there's a lot of people that want to try hot pot, uh, but you know they they don't know how to start, or they have questions, but don't know who to ask. You know, 
you have some sort of idea from watching people do hot poppet. Nobody really explains anything. So I wanted to fill those gaps. Here's tofu. And by the way, if you've never had tofu and you want to try it, I recommend doing the firm to extra firm tofu plain, right? Because it'll get you used to the texture and it doesn't have any flavor, literally. I mean, it takes on the flavor of whatever you put it in, right? So that's how I would start. I mean, that's how I started, you know, years ago. Plain tofu. So these thinly sliced cuts of meat, the beef, the lamb, you know, pork, you know, 15, 20 seconds is done when you put it in a boiling, a rolling boil hot pot, it's done. Now, if your cuts are bigger than thinly sliced, it's gonna take more time, clearly, but you hit up that Asian market, get the shabu shabu or the hot pot meat, is cut to the perfect thickness to cook between 5 to 15 seconds. Yep. Now, this triple pot You know, you put this in the middle of a table and this will satisfy, you know, four to six people easy. So spinach in there, bok choy, A little bit of mushrooms, milky mushroom, a little napa cabbage. And we're gonna let that cook for about a minute, and we'll be enjoying that too. This lamb is spicy here. Pretty much, when it's thinly sliced like this. Once it changes color from that uh, red or pink to this uh, brown and grayish color, it's done. And y'all can have that. Yeah, that was real time. I didn't speed it up. It cooked just that fast. So if you put it in the hot pot, five, 10, 15 minutes, and you put it in, that's too long. So I'm gonna eat the rest of this off camera. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely hope that I taught you something. The equipment, if you don't have it, take the description box. I'll throw a few links in there, and get you started, get you on your way, give you an idea of what you're looking for so you can enjoy how a hot pot with your friends, your family. Enjoy that fellowship. And hey, eating good food and having a good conversation.
That being said, this Raw Shiraw, I'm out. Hey, if you like this, share me out. Give me a thumbs up. Comment below. Let me know what you think. If we're not connected on Instagram, put my name in. Look for the great cat. Let's connect. Let's do this. I'm out. Enjoy your day. Oh, I didn't want to leave quite yet. Almost forgot to tell you. The last thing that you eat, right? After you're done with your meat, your veggies, right? Is you enjoy the noodles. You add the noodles then. And you finish off your meal with a nice warm broth. So you take some of the broth out of your pot, put it into your bowl, eat it with the noodles to top off the evening. Okay? And if your levels of your broth get low, remember that pot of boiling water we have, top off your pot. Okay, now I can let you guys go and I can get back to eat.